All right, so I just finished binge watching season six of Orange is the New Black on Netflix, and boy, do I got a lot to say about it. So this video is gonna be my review and reaction for the entire season, so stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. So if you are new to my channel, I have a mental health channel. My channel is dedicated to helping you with your mental and emotional well-being, all right? But something I try to do is I try to pull from television, movies, maybe other YouTubers because everything can be something that we could take in and learn from and kind of reflect on and say, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I improve my mental health? So I try to take relevant relevant, you know, content out there and try to teach lessons that might be able to help improve your mental health, all right? So if that's something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button, all right? But anyways, so uh, one of the last Netflix shows that I reviewed was 13 Reasons Why. A lot of you came to my channel from those reviews. So I'm thinking about doing some character breakdowns, but anyways, I wanna kind of review the whole season. Um, but I do wanna pluck a specific uh, kind of mental health topic that we see throughout this season. So there will be spoilers, so if you haven't seen all the episodes, sorry, there's gonna be some spoilers. Uh, but anyways, go check them out, come back, or whatever you gotta do. But if you don't care about spoilers, just stay with me, stay with me here. So anyways, season six picks up where in the last season, <clears throat> we had the prison riot, okay? The women's prison over at Litchfield, they went on a riot and you know they were keeping the guards captive and all that kind of stuff. In season six, they are now at the maximum security prison, okay? It's a lot rougher, a lot tougher, uh, a lot harder inmates and things like that. But <clears throat> kind of the overall topic and what I kept seeing over and over from all the different characters is just paying the consequences for their actions, all right? so. I, I've talked about on my channel a few times about this internal locus of control, okay? This locus of control realizing that the things I do have results, okay? And these can be positive or negative. And this is something that like we saw so many struggles from almost all of the characters, almost all of the characters that their actions have consequences. Now, I guess you could say that for anybody who's in prison, right? Your actions have consequences. But this is really interesting because like, I've never really seen this in a show, and maybe it's just because I don't watch many shows about prison, like I didn't watch Oz or anything, but now there's consequences for what they did in prison that's extending sentences or having more punishments and things like that. So a lot of our characters, while feeling justified in their actions for that riot, they're experiencing the consequences and having a lot of regret. One of my favorite quotes of all time is this. We make decisions based on self, which later place us in a position to be hurt, okay? So the way this is something for you to learn from is when we're emotionally fueled, right? Whether it's because we're angry, usually it's anger, or because of love, or whatever it is, the actions we take may hurt us later on in life. So the, the prison riot, you know, obviously there was some unjust stuff going on over at Litchfield, there was the death of Poussey back in season four, and that triggered a lot of emotions, right? So in response to that, they had this uh, prison riot, right? And they also held COs captive and made all these demands and different characters had different reasons for what they were doing and things like that. People like Tasty were trying to make change, but even Tasty is seeing the consequences of her actions here, right? But there are a few different characters that um, really had a lot of consequences for their actions. I kind of want to focus on Red, okay? So Red, she's the mama bear, okay? She's she's like the mother to a lot of the inmates there. And she's had a lot of interesting story arcs throughout the seasons. But what I really want to look at is her dynamic with Frida, okay? So throughout the season, we see a lot of people turning on each other, ratting people out. Some people like uh, Cindy, for example, uh, AKA Tova, she, uh, she lied in order to protect herself, which then had consequences for her best friend, Tasty, and things like that. So I'm, like I said, I might do some more character breakdowns, but in the example of Red, okay? So Red felt very justified in her actions and what she did, all right? So Piscatella ended up dying and things like that. But anyways, so part of what Red was doing, Red was seeking revenge, okay? Red was seeking revenge against Piscatella. Red is bald for most of the season because of what Piscatella did, all right? Right? So there's a certain point 
where Frida, Frida, she is trying to protect her own butt and she's trying to get moved to, uh, they call it Florida, which is the nice kind of like, it's for like old people or trans people. Or, you know, there's not a lot of violence that goes on in this Florida block, okay? But anyways, Frida did that to save her own butt. And we could also say that Frida is also seeing the consequences of action she had like 30 years ago. Because Frida's trying to hide because she's afraid she's gonna get murdered. But anyways, as a result of that, Red gets 10 more years. So there's also an interesting kind of conversation about what family is, what real family is, and things like that. Red is very big about family. And in this season, Red is hurt. Red is hurt by all these different people turning their backs on her. One of them is Nikki. Nikki is somebody who Red helped out a lot. But Red actually respects what Nikki did because Nikki came to Red and was like, look, I have to tell him what happened. I have to be honest about this. And, you know, as a recovery addict I can understand why Nikki did that but also Nikki had to do it you know to save her own butt too but Red respected that but Frida Red sees Frida as just this lying conniving you know just terrible person and Red is now out for revenge again not learning from her actions okay like something like you guys we're all gonna screw up we're all gonna mess up we're all gonna make decisions based on ourselves based on our emotions but we need to like next time we run into that we got to say oh wait the last time I acted out of revenge, the last time I acted out of anger, I had these consequences, right? So once Red kind of, you know, uh, realizes that these people aren't real family, she starts to focus her attention more on her real family, right? So she calls her son and her son's like, hold on, I'll go get dad. And Red's like, no, I just wanna talk to you. How is everything? You never come see me and da da da. All these things, right? And she's like, I want you to come visit, right? So, Red ends up following in the wrong crowd, right? She follow, follows uh, Carol around and becomes friends with Carol. And Carol has her own little feud going on. But Carol really fuels Red's idea of revenge. And Red, you know, she wants Frida dead too, right? Like this revenge in her mind, she wants Frida dead. So, like it's crazy to me, and this is one of the most heartbreaking things to me. So Red gets a surprise visit. She gets some surprise visitors. It's her son and her grandbaby that she's never met in her entire life. And she's going to see her son and her grandbaby and focus on the, her real family. This is the thing that she wants. But as she's walking down the hallway, she encounters Frida. And because Red cannot control her emotions, because Red wants revenge so bad, Red goes and attacks Frida. She attacks Frida and starts strangling her and yelling at Frida, right? And guess what happens? Red gets dragged off. She doesn't get to see her son. She doesn't get to see her baby, or her grandbaby rather, right? And then Red goes to solitary confinement, all right? And like, man, I'm just like, I get that, I've been there. Those of you who haven't known me for over six years, some of you haven't even known me that long, I used to be such an angry and spiteful person, but because of my anger, because of my revenge-filled thoughts, I kept getting myself in more trouble. And because of this, I was hurting myself as well as the people around me. I didn't realize that because I was driven so much by my emotions, by my anger, by my revenge, I was making things worse. But the problem was I was delusional because I kept blaming the rest of the world. This is why I keep talking to you about that internal locus of control. Like, in Red's mind, it's not her fault that she wasn't able to see her son and grandbaby. It's not her fault that now her son and family isn't gonna wanna come visit her again. Red's gonna think that that's not her fault, it's Frida's fault, right? And until we start taking responsibility for our actions, nothing gets better. Nothing gets better. And this is something that we keep seeing throughout this season with different characters. Some characters learned from this, some characters didn't. You know what I mean? But I really want you to take from this and ask yourself, is your anger, is your revenge attitude, is being rude to people, are these things beneficial to you or are they not beneficial to you? Because if they're not, you really need to audit your life and check in with yourself and you're like, man, these are some things I need to work on because all they do is make matters worse, all right? But anyways, that's what I want to talk about with season six. It was a great show. It was a great uh, season. Like I, I love, I love this show. I love this show so much. Uh, something I do love. I love that it's kind of evolved away from Piper, and we get more focus on other characters and stuff like that. I love that throughout all the seasons. I love seeing different backstories. Here's something I'll, I'll mention. Here's something I'll mention before I let you go too. Like. 
One thing I love about this show is it increases empathy, right? So as a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery, I've met thousands and thousands of people who are drug addicts and alcoholics, and like, there's so many judgments against drug addicts and alcoholics, and people don't know their past. What I love about this show is there's a stigma about people in prison and who are locked up, and like, we get to see their backstories and see what happened, what happened in their life that turned them into the person that they are today, and I, I think I think like, you know, even though it's a fictional show, obviously, we really get to empathize with that. And I think that's so important. Like we gotta learn, like everybody has a different story. And once we sit down and actually listen and understand what happened to these people, we start to empathize a little bit and be like, man, like this person had a really messed up childhood or their abusive relationship. While it's not an excuse, we start to understand what can lead to that path. And I think that's important, especially as a parent. Like I, I see these things, I'm like, man, especially from my old childhood, I'm like, man, I gotta be a better parent to my kid, all right? But anyways, here's what I want you all to do, okay? If you're a fan of Orange is the New Black, I want you to leave comments down below. Who would you like me to do character breakdowns of or different storylines and things like that? What would you like to see? Because I already have a bunch. I got them written down on my phone. So like one of them that I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that I'm gonna make is CO McCullough. She is one of the COs who was uh, held hostage and she has PTSD. This PTSD is leading to self-harming behavior, is leading to substance abuse. So I do wanna talk about that. That one's, I think, a really good video that I wanna do. Next one is Daya. Daya developed some addiction in that. I wanna talk about that. I don't think it's entirely realistic, even though it kind of is, but there's some things I wanna talk about with that. Um, Ruiz. This is another one that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make a video on. Ruiz's path towards redemption, trying to redeem herself and things like that, trying to find spirituality or religion, whatever you wanna call it, I wanna talk about that. Uh, some other ideas I have, Cindy, Cindy's lies for Tasty, even lying by omission. Um, Relationships, I think some relationships that might be interesting to talk about is the dynamic between Piper and Alex. There's some toxic things there and stuff, but really, Pensatucky and Doggett, Woo, that's a good one to talk about. Um, the other idea I have is, man, the feud between Barbara and Carol, like, ooh, hoo, hoo, girl, I could do a whole video about that. But anyways, those are some of the topics that I'm just kind of tossing around. But for any of you who have watched season six, leave comments down below. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like me to make. All right, <clears throat> but anyways, that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, again, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Click that little round subscribe button. And a huge thank you to everyone everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And if you wanna check out some more videos, you can click or tap right there. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Control your anger and revenge, and I'll see you next time.